Well, this is a really interesting turn of events. Guten yardening, everybody. From the end of winter until it was warm enough for plants to start forming, we have had in this area some strawberry spinach. Now these spinach came back after dying off last year and initially before I learned a little bit more about the plant I thought well maybe it is a perennial or a biennial plant but the way strawberry spinach is described is actually as a an annual that acts like a perennial and I think the real reason why they say that is because strawberry spinach is a strong self seeder so if you didn't know any better you might think that it had died back and then just come back the second year but that's definitely not the case and what's really interesting to me about this is when I initially did a video about strawberry spinach I talked about how it was delicious, it's not actually a spinach, it's just part of the spinach family, how the red berries on top when it bolts that don't taste like strawberries, but that's where it gets its name, the strawberry spinach, how they're really nice, they're not really sweet, they're definitely not really fruity, but they add a good texture to a salad. I talked all about those virtues of the strawberry spinach and in passing I mentioned that some people consider strawberry spinach to be invasive but I just did that in passing I truly didn't think too much about it because the strawberry spinach we planted last year we only did in a couple of spaces and it didn't really seem to spread well we let it bolt this year it was stunning we harvested a lot of the berries but we weren't the only one to harvest those berries now I love our birds, except for when they sometimes steal our fruit. Now, they add a ton of ambiance to our area in the mornings, in the afternoons. In fact, if I'm really quiet right now, you should still hear them. I hear a couple of birds out there. That's fantastic. They also help us, I think, with some of our Japanese beetle problems. And we even were able to follow one of our robins as it went through the process of hatching and then growing and leaving the nest. So, I mean, I like our birds just in general, but one of the things they do is they see these berries on top of the strawberry spinach and those berries contain hundreds of seeds. And what do they do? They take them, they eat them, they fly off to somewhere else nearby and then they have their feces that comes out and what we end up with is strawberry spinach in other places in the garden. And I'm going to show you some of that here in just a second to see how far this has spread. But on top of that, you know, we were harvesting some of these berries. Some of them would also fall off, hit the ground. And now take a look at our bed all along here. Now you can see we've pulled up the strawberry spinach and we've replaced it with some tomatoes that are looking great, some onions down in here, but look all the way along here. This is all, all of this baby strawberry spinach and it is covering everything. Now, I guess fortunately the seeds sort of just sit on top and these are easy to pull out, but there's hundreds and thousands of these getting started. Look at this. All right, this is a different kind of weed here, but so many, and this one, this plant has already started to pop up and is developing well enough we could almost eat that. So I guess the positive here is that what pops up is edible, but at the same time, now we have a whole mess on our hands. And this is just the localized area where we grew it. This hay bale, on the other hand, is a good 40 feet away and we've got strawberry spinach everywhere here. So 40 feet this way, and then another 40 feet along here in our main garden. So we've gone a good 70, 80 feet, I would say, from where we had it initially planted, and we have even more of this strawberry spinach. So our advice would be very simple. If you want to plant strawberry spinach, you should do it at your own risk of spreading. You know, the benefit, the reason why people grow it, I think, is for that red berry. 
But again, that's technically when it bolts or goes to seed. So if you want to avoid that happening, you can take it out or pull it out before it goes to seed. And then you're not going to have the same issue we're having right now. The other thing that you could do, and I think this would result in more control over the situation, is to grow them in containers and then be very cautious about covering them whenever the time comes for perhaps birds to feed on them, etc. I mean, realistically, when I heard that some people considered them to be an invasive species, I didn't think too much of it, but now, now I'm sure they're right. Well, I want to repeat one thing. It's not that we're saying don't grow it, it's that we're saying be careful if you do. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and took something from it, and if you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.